Shalom, Racha, and welcome once again to Mitzvah Study, a division of Parasha Study Plus and Tanakh Study. This week we have a single header parasha, Parashat Tesaveh. And here we see that there are seven mitzvot in Parashat Tesaveh, and one of them is Mitzvat Aseh of Mitzvat Kiddush Yadayim Veraglayim Besha'at Ha'avodah meaning there is a positive commandment to sanctify one's hands and feet before entering the Beit HaMikdash for worship. We're going to see that this mitzvah has its tentacles not only in actual uh, in actual worship in the times of the Beit HaMikdash, but also this is just one of the offshoots of Netilat Yadayim in our time. So the first part of the class will be focusing on the actual Deoraita mitzvah, which is simply... Uh, the the commandment to make sure that your hands and feet are sanctified before entering the Mikdash. And the second part of the class will be on Netila Yadaim, uh, both for the meal and for waking up in the morning. So we have a lot to cover, so let's get started. So first we see in Sefer HaMitzvot Naharamba, Mitzvat Aseh Kaf Dalid, that there is a positive commandment from this week's parasha, the Kadesh HaKohen Yadav V'Raglav B'Sha'at avoda for the, for the Kohen, to wash his hands and feet uh, at the time of entering the temple for service. As it says, right? That's what we say, that they, Aharon and his children must wash their hands before entering for the service. So it's a mitzvah deoraita, to make sure that hands and feet are clean for the uh, for the uh, for the Kohanim from the service. Sefer Achinuch Mitzvah 105 Kof Vav Kiddush Yadayim Veraglaim B'Sha'at Avoda. He says Lirchot Hayadayim Veraglaim B'Chol Et Hikanes LaHechal. Anytime anybody is entering uh, into the service, into the sanctuary, you must wash hands and feet. Ve'Havod La'Avod Avoda V'Zot Hi Mitzvat Kiddush Yadayim Veraglaim. Shnei Emar. It says, And then, So whether they were coming into Ohel Moed or to uh, do the appropriate services on the altar, they had to wash their hands and feet. Now, why hands and feet? Because their feet were also exposed during those times. They, were, they wore sandals and they wore a type of uh, shoes that exposed the feet. So those things had to be, had to be cleaned uh, and be presentable at at all times. Sefer HaChinuch continues, and always, as as is always the uh, style of Sefer HaChinuch, wants to, um, us to understand the Yisod, the uh, the Shoresh of this mitzvah. HaYisod HaKabua SheAmar LeHagdil Kavod HaBayit. It's in order that there should be respect and uh, and all for the for the Bayit for the Bet Hamikdash. VeKol Amelachot and Asot Sham, and also to understand that it's a type of preparation. It's a symbolic preparation to make sure that it is getting its due proper respect. Not only the Bayit, but also the uh, the, the all of the work and all of the melachot that are being done there as well. Here, the same slide, the previous slide was in Hebrew. Here it is in English, just to continue. We said, and therefore, it's fitting to clean the hands, which are the things that are involved in the work at all times. So that's why we picked the head. You could say, oh, why not take a full body shower? That's what's that's what's involved in uh, is using your hands. It says in Masechet Zevachim that the Kohen does not need to sanctify his hands between one service and another, meaning. Before he enters to do his service, he washes his hands and his feet. Now he can go from service to service, from action to action, without having to wash his hands in between each and every service. Rather, once during the morning, it suffices. And then he can serve the entire day and the entire night. Um, and that's when he does not. However, if there is a break by either he goes to sleep or he has to go to the bathroom, or he does has any sort of removal of his mind onto something else, then he has to wash his hands again. So one washing of the hands in the mikdash and feet were enough for the entire day of avodah. But if there was anything called a hesech hadat, as we said, sleep, going to the bathroom, or removal of concentration, he would have to wash his hands again. And then we said that since even if he was pure and clean from the beginning, of his arrival there, he would still need to wash his hands again because it's because of the kavod that he was uh, having uh, that he was having for the services. Sefer Hanuch continues and says, "V'chen Masha Amru Zichonon Debracha Kama Ma'im Sarich Lihiot BeKior." And he says there are a couple of details that we need to discuss. So, how much the kior was the water basin that was in the mikdash and in the mishkan? 
So how much water had to be in the in the water basin? Because again, that's where the Kohanim would go and they would wash. So how, there was actually, in Masechet Zavachim, it says how much water there needed to be. It couldn't be less than, the enough, for four, than enough for four people to wash their netila. Right, uh, that's Aaron and his sons, and Pinehas Imahem, and it was taught in the Gemara that Pinehas. We see this also from the hints in the in the in the pasuk as well that Pinehas was also around them. So these four people that has to always be at, at any given time enough for the four Kohanim to be able to wash and uh, wash their hands and feet. Sefer uh, HaHinuch, again, in the same mitzvah, uh, continues and says, V'ketzad mitzvat kiddush. So what does it mean that this kiddush, Yadayim V'raglayim, very nice. We said, we established it's Deoraita, that before going into the Mikdash, Kohanim must do this. We said the reasoning, how it's to give kavod to the Mikdash and kavod to the to the services. We said that without Hesech Hadat, one washing for the day is enough, or let's say sleeping or going to the bathroom. And we also said that it has to be enough water in the kiyor for four people. Now, how do we do it? How, how is this washing done? Is it like we do it, where we have, uh, you know, uh, one, 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 two, two, three, three? Or is there something different? There actually is. V'ketzad mitvat kiddush. So also from Aseret Zevachim, Yotet, Adaf Yotet Amubet, we say, Meniach yado haimanit al raglo haimanit. So picture you have your hands up, right hand and left hand. Put your right hand on your right foot and your left hand on your left foot. Still standing up, but in that bent position, and then the yadoh smalid or aglo smalid, the rochetz omed, the lo omed, the lo yoshev, the fish mikelal avoda, who kiddush adayim veraglaim, kol avodot mikdash, ma'amadhen. No, sorry, ma'omedhen. Shnei mar, right? La amod the sharet. So it says all of the work in the bet mikdash is to be standing. So you put your right hand on your right foot, left hand on your left foot. You're still standing up, meaning your 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 bottom is not touching the floor. Your legs are still trying to put, keep yourself as upright as possible with your hands on your feet. And then the water is being poured, poured simultaneously on, on your hands and your feet, on the right hand and foot, and then the left hand and foot. To just uh, show you, so anybody who's following along with the slides, I'm just going to minimize myself a little bit. So you can see in here, so you see pictures of the Kohanim are doing this. There's the kiyor, and then you see they're still standing, but their right hand and left hands are touching their hands and feet, and they're pouring it out onto their hands and feet simultaneously. Let's just take a quick look at this picture on the slide. Okay, I hope it's clear. Okay, so now that's basically, that is the mitzvah of kiddush yadayim and naglaim. That's the oraita. Everything else that's going to be talking, speaking, that we're going to be speaking about now is only rabbinic. It's only the Rabbanan. However, it's extremely important because as we see, the shortish of this mitzvah to show kavod not only to the Mikdash, but kavod to the service in the Mikdash. So whatever services we still have now, which you're going to see is praying, prayer coming into the Bet Knesset, were also extremely important. So let's go get, and even though it's, <clears throat> excuse me, that it's rabbinic, we of course hold, uh, you know, rabbinic laws in the highest of regards. That's that, that's that's who we are, and um, and when you see now the, the, how the Gemara goes to such great lengths and and the words that are said about netila yadaim, um, we're going to see how important this mitzvah is. is. So let's go to Masechet Eruvin Daf Kaf Aleph Amud Bet. Amar Rav Yehuda Amar Shmuel. Rav Yehuda said in the name of Shmuel. So we see that really now the, the, the Gemara is backdating for us that that the tikkun that the takana, the decree for washing hands is from also Shlomo HaMelech. Shlomo HaMelech he was metaken uh, that you had to have eruv. Uh, right in Eruv Chatzerot, it's it's talking about and unetilat yadaim, and you also have to, that you have to wash your hands to purify them from any impurities, which is more the morning washing, but also it's going to connect to food. Yatsta bat kol ve'amra, a divine voice actually came out and said, Beni im hacham libecha ismach libi gam ani. He says, "Just my son, if your heart is wise, then my heart is also rejoicing." And right? it's a quote from Mishle. 
um, which is again beautiful that Hakadosh at the, the Bat Kol was saying that. Ve'omer hacham beni v'samach libi v'ashiva chorpi davar. Right, and then it states with regards to uh, to Shilomo that my son, you're going to be wise, and the heart is glad, and 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 going to respond to anybody who taunts me. Bottom line, this was a great idea that. Uh, Shalomo established and HaKadosh Baruch Hu not only concurred but everything was uh, it, it was considered a tremendous tremendous mitzvah now what are the reasons for this decree what are the reasons for the decree of Netila Yadayim so there are two original um, original decrees that we see so one is going to be called is to remove the dirt the Zohama from our hands. So it says, Tam ha-gezera, hu lefisha hayadayim askaniyoten, our hands are very busy. Venogot mibili mesim mekomot mezohamim, and we put them in dirty places. So mishum kach gaz rechachamim astam yadayim, shiyu shiniyot letum'ah. So we get this same reason is going to come back later when we talk about the reasons for making netilat yadayim in the morning, but let's just analyze what the hachamim say about this decree of Shalom HaMelech. So number one, saying that since hands are generally dirty, they can become what's called shniot the tum'ah, second level conduits or conductors of tum'ah. We don't want anybody touching food, which type of food specifically? A sheni la tum'ah, the second level or second level conductor of tum'ah, is posel et atruma, this, this special type of the, the tum'ah, which was considered, uh, right, uh, sanctified, uh, and it was given, <coughs> excuse me, to the Kohanim. If anybody touched it with dirty hands, then you, it would make the food uh, impure. So this was called umishum srach teruma. What is srach teruma? So we put in parentheses in order to get people used to not eating teruma with with in, with psul, right? teruma and to make sure that they were being mindful of it. Hitzrichu hachamim yadaim gam achilat in order to train people. Srach Tirumat in order to uh, to to train people to make sure that they were eating Tiruma properly. Uh, the Hachamim had to make sure that this applied also to Cholin, also to non sanctified food. So again, Tiruma was sanctified, Shniot the Tumah with the hands because they were dirty, they were they were they're all busy all day, touching places where there's Zohama, where there's impurity. And we wanted to make and the rabbis wanted to make sure that this was being kept as a geder. So anybody had, everybody had to make the netila yadayim, uh, again, before f- food and if they were being, if they were impure. And just I wanted to read this line from Masechet Sota, which is very important. Sota of Dal and Mubet. It says, Hachamenu, this is my right, own right, Hachamenu, right, Hikpidu me'od be'inyan netila yadayim. What did they say? Right, they were, Hakpada means they were very scrupulous with it. They were very careful. And the quote from Masechet Sota is, Kol amezalzel b'netila yadayim. Anybody who scoffs or, or cheapens and, and disgraces netila yadayim, ne'akar mina olam, the guy, that person is uprooted from the world. What does this mean? The rabbis talk about this. It means that you're just not present. You're not understanding that there's kedusha in the world. So the only the purpose of this world is to connect to that kedusha. And if you're not willing to acknowledge that there's kedusha here, just like the the, the, Kohan, the Kohanim going into the Mikdash, oh, this is a special service. I must wash my hands. And you also refuse to do that. So you're also, you mezalzel, so then you're also ne'ekad min ha'olam. You're also uprooted uh, from this world. So let's just go with practical reasons for netila yadaim in the morning. So based based on this, we see that the reasoning for the takana was really more connected to food, but also we see that it's intertwined with also tum'ah. So there are two netila yadaims that we're going to have. The netila yadaim when we wake up in the morning, which we're going to see the reasons for, and then the netila yadaim that we do before we eat bread. So let's start with just netila yadaim in the morning. So there are four major reasons as to why we do netila yadaim in the morning, notwithstanding what we just what we just said. But here, this is, I gave it to you very clear, clearly over here, broken down by you know the major posek uh, that says it, major dishon really here in this case. And um, again, you could always refer back to this list and look at it in. Um, on the slides. So reason number one is the dat of the Rosh. As we said, he pulls what we said from the Gemara. Hands, uh, when a person goes to sleep again, this is again, reasons for netilat yadayim in the morning. When a person sleeps, you don't know where your hands are going to itch or touch. So therefore, if you're, you're definitely going to cu- touch a, a part of your body that's normally covered. So before you pray, tefillat shaharit, you got to make sure that your hands are clean from just ne- uh, logical reasoning of 
of the dirt. That's what the Rosh says. I said we'd come back to it. Here, Yadai Maskaniyot, here they touch things, and Vadai, they're going to be dirty. Nagu bimekomotam baguf. And they're not necessarily going to be pure. So, reason number one from the Rosh, Yadai Maskaniyot, hands are busy, and you got to make sure they're clean before praying. Reason number two is the Rashba, that every morning, the whole book, Nase Adam, it's as if the person is called, this is called Briya Hadasha. He's a new creation, right? And Adam, when, when a person goes to sleep, they're very tired, and, he, and his neshama, parts, parts of his neshama go up to Hashem. And when he wakes up, he is now refreshed, and he's Hadash. So a new type of Briya, Briya Mechudesh, it is all, Yesh the Kadesh Uliyahed La'avodat Hashem. So therefore you got to make a symbolic gesture that I'm purified. Now I'm a new guy, new man, this day when I woke up. So when I wake up, now I have to do something to just purify myself, the Kadesh. And so this, see this new person? I'm a vehicle to serving you, HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So let me make myself Kadosh, and I do that through washing hands in the Tila Yadayim. Reasons three and four. Reason three is found in Masechet Shabbat of Kof Hayat Amud Bet. It says Sheyesh the Hizaher Lifnei Netida Yadaim Shacharit Shayadaim Lo Yigu Bepe Bechotam Ubeayin Ubeozen Mibenei Sheruach Ra'a Shora Al Yadaim Nachar Hashena. So this reason is called Ruach Ra'a. There's an evil spirit or evil uh, evil force that is that is lingering on a person's hand after they go to sleep and it specifically sticks to the person's uh hands or, or, and also feet when they used to uh, always walk around with with barefoot feet but not now only after you wash your hands three times alternating that's how we do the morning fill up the cup in the right hand pass it to the left left pours on the right hand first that's one pass it to the right pours back on to the left that's one on the left hand. That's one. Then you do two, two, and three, three. While keep passing the cup. That's called a seru, serugin, which is alternating. That's the only way to get this ruach ra'a off. So we're not going to have this class on ruach ra'a, what exactly it is. But the Gemara and the Rabbi say, look, it's, it's usually attributed to once the neshama is going up, that creates a void or a vacuum of kedushah and holiness, and therefore ruach ra'a comes onto it. And when the neshama comes back into us, and then the this ruach ra'a, leaves but it leaves its residue on the hands and it's very da damaging so we don't touch our any orifices of our body nostrils uh, ears mouth um anything uh that that has a hole or, or any food that's not covered uh to make sure that the ruach ra'a is not on it fourth reason is from the kabbalah the zohar it's in helik aleph Shabalaila ba'etsha adam niradem, right? When when a when a, a, a person is, falls asleep, nishar domem the lo machshava ma'aseh. That's it. He's 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 out. He's not responsive. Toem kol adam tam shel mita. It says that a person tastes one sixtieth of death. That's here in the Gemara. Masech berachot. It's nun zayin amud bet. Shashena hi achad helke shishim mimitat. One sixtieth of death. So in order to to wipe that off of us, um, we, we also make sure to do netilah yadayim. So again, these are the more spiritual reasons, reasons three and four of either ruach ra'a or getting the mita off of us, and reasons one and two, uh, a little bit more practical in terms of, let's say, it being dirty and making sure that we are uh, a new b'riya before we come to pray. Um, just very interesting regarding this, uh, regarding... Um, this ruach ra'a. There are many. This is including this is the hida, uh, ben ishai. Uh, so uh, tremendous, tremendous uh, halachic authorities and Sephardic authorities that say that since the, the ruach ra'a is still strong, uh, the, the, this, this evil, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, spirit or force that's still on us, it's still strong. The person should make sure to let's say either leave netilat yadaim right by their bed and make sure that they do netilat yadaim right in the morning or. They, that when they're walking to the bathroom or the kitchen to do nitayla, they should break up their steps. Don't do more than like three or four steps um, in consecutively, uh, as the ruach ra'a has been known to damage in that way. So again, it's a little bit high for us to understand again, it's, but it's brought down, uh, again, as you said, kafahim, we said, um, ben ishai. It's interesting that Chachamad Yosef seems to not rule this way. Uh, I'll give you the quote. He, the quotes here from Halichot Olam. Halichot Olam is a sefer that Chachamad wrote where he highlights uh, areas where he disagreed sometimes, and sometimes agreed with the Ben Ishai. 
and uh, brought down his reasonings, logics, and proofs. And this is one of those places. It's in Halichot Olam Chelek Aleph, Parashat Toledot, Halacha Aleph. He says, Hakam emittato baboke, a person wakes up in the in the morning. Mutaru lagat be mabushav kodim netila yadaim shahari. He's allowed to go touch his 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 clothes before he washed his hands. So now here it's not talking about any movement, but it's saying that the, the, the clothing itself can 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 be touched. But later on in that same in, in that same halakha, he says, Definitely, if you will go to sleep late, you can get dressed before you wash nitilayadav. So meaning, you can get dressed, walk around the room, uh, and, and and get fully dressed, then go downstairs and then wash your hands nitilayadav. Uh, again, the ruach ra'ak, according to many opinions, has been extremely weakened in our times. Uh, you have this holiday you have to rely on. He does, however, say, if anybody can be mahmir on this, tavu'ala beracha. And as I mentioned, we have great gedolim that also said that a person should really try to wash their hands right away out after the bed. But if it's too inconvenient and you're not going to be able to be on the program of putting water right by your bed, it's a little clumsy, It's not you know, you're going to forget. Um, then it, or you go to sleep late for sure. If you're a late go, uh, person, uh, go to sleep late usually, then you can definitely uh, rely on this heter. So just some practical, uh, just some practical halachot about netilat yadayim in the morning. So again, we spill three, uh, spill, spill the water on ourselves three times, serugin, alternating, as we mentioned. And because why is it alternating three times? That was the way that the hachamim told us that gets rid of the ruach ra'ah. Uh, when it comes to that's halacha number one. Um, Halacha, actually, that should have been one one a. Let's go back to really number one. Is yirchatz yadavi barech al netila yadaim. First we wash and then we make the berachah. Now, why is this interesting? Because the Rambam says that really what should be done, all berachot are done over leasiatan. What does over leasiatan mean? It means that first you make the berachah and then you do the action. So if I was to ask you, what's the action of netila yadaim? It's washing the hands. So wouldn't it make more sense? Fill up the cup. I have the water. Now, now make the beracha. And then, bam, wash your hands. That's what the Rambam says to do. Maran Shohan Aruch disagrees. And he says, no, first you wash your hands, then you lift up and say, lift your hands up and say the Beracha. Now, why? Because there's a Mahlokit as to what they, first of all, Maran seems to hint as people just started doing it this way. But also that there could be just, just a Mahlokit, there's a disagreement as to what is the final action of Niti Yadaim. Is it the washing or is it the drying? Drying off of the droplets. So Maran Shohan Aruch says it's the drying. So therefore, you fill up the cup, wash the hands, hold them up, say the Beracha, and then you dry. So that's according to Shohan Aruch. Um, Again, Rambam says to not do it that way. We 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 follow Shulchan Aruch. En sarich revi'it lenetilat yadaim letfila. We do not need a revi'it of of water, which is three ounces, for the netilat yadaim for tefila, which is this the morning one. You just simply you could do a little bit if you're doing one and then one and then two and then two, especially for this. Then you just you pour small amounts of of water. And it is uh, Maran Shulchan Aruch says that it is very good and very advisable. That a person should do all of the uh, follow all of the stringencies of washing for the meal, and put those stringencies on washing for the morning. So it's, the netilat yadaim for a meal for bread is more strict because it's actual cleanliness. The reason why we're we're washing our hands is to make sure that we're not we're about to use our hands to eat, and we don't want to ingest anything foul that will that will make us sick. So there are a lot of other restrictions by. Seuda by the the washing for seuda, meaning that we must um, uh, uh, meaning we we have to understand it has to be done from the from a person's uh, kawach that's kawach kavra is one thing you can't just put it in a well or put it in a basin which is something that you can do for waking up if it was shah but shah the hak the water can't be uh, can't be disgusting or pasul um, uh, you should try to dump it if you eat. It, it, also, like we just mentioned, you don't need it if you eat for the morning. You do need it if you eat, um, at least for the one for the se'uda. Uh, again, bevatahat, if you're doing it all at once. So again, we're not going to go into exactly every different nuance that the, the netilat yadayim is more important, or that, uh, sorry, it's more strict by washing for the meal than washing for the morning. But again, it's, it's best to use all of the humrot for also waking up in the morning. Shohan Aruch and Orachayim Siman Dalet Seifim Yod and Yer Aleph. We just make sure that one should take the vessel in their right hand and then transfer it to the left, as we mentioned. That's important. And we also mention 
that if a person is washing somebody else's hands, sorry, we didn't mention this before, but we're mentioning now, if a person, if you want to wash netilaya daim for someone else, you have to make sure that you wash your hands first. Sort of like, uh, you know, in flight, God forbid, uh, you know, emergency when you're watching that video on an airplane, they say secure your mask first, then help the other person. So same thing with netilaya daim. Shohan Aruch Or Haim Siman Dalet Se'if Yod Gimal says a very famous halakha that we that we use at least twice a year in Hoshana Rabba and Shavuot. What happens if a person stays up all night? So we just said that, that that two at least two of the reasons have to do with going to sleep at night, where there's ruach ra'a at night, and there's also a, a taste of death when a person goes to sleep. So really, we don't want to say a beracha if a person stayed up all night. So says, Maran himself it says there's a there's a safek if you have to wash your hands if you didn't, if you stayed up all night. And Hagaha the Rama says, you wash them without a beracha. If a person did not sleep all night, that's what we do. We wash our hands, we follow this Rama, we wash our hands without a beracha. If a person even dozed off for even a few moments though while learning on any of these nights, then we say that a person does have the ability to say it with a beracha. Also, another thing that you can do that's also recommended both there and and other poskim is that you should wash your hands and then right before you wash it right before someone else goes. And then when that, that needs to wash their hands and say berachan, and when they say their berachan, they're washing hands, they have you in mind and you answer and you answer Amen. Uh, finally, this is a very important slide, we won't go into all of them, but but Shohan Aruch and Orahim Simandad Saif Yorhaid mentions a lot of other uh, items or, or uh, events that a person does uh, each and every day uh, where you need to do netilat yadayim on this, meaning the same netilat yadayim of getting, let's say, a ruach ra'a off of you uh, because, as you would when you woke up in the morning, but just you don't say a beracha. And these uh, these are, it's here in English, uh, a person who enters, uh, goes, uh, goes to the bathroom, uh, he wakes up from a nap, he's, he takes a sauna, he cuts his nails, takes off his shoes and touches them, touches his feet, wa- uh, washes his head. Um, and also, some say uh, after they were uh, t- touching a dead, a dead body, obviously they were among the dead, um, or, or uh, clen- cleansing their clothes, or uh, having sexual intercourse. So we try to be very strict with all of these, and anytime anybody does this, the full list is here uh, in English. Then we also wash our hands, serugin, that means alternating, as if we were waking up in the morning. That's it for us for today's class. Parashat uh, Saveh again, Kiddush Yadayim V'Raglayim, very important. It was a Deoraita on the times of the Bet HaMikdash, and we do so by being very careful with our laws of Netilat Yadayim, waking up in the morning and before we eat a meal. Shabbat Shalom, and of course, Purim Sameach. See you next time.